Aside from Pygmalion, this has got to be the weirdest King of the Hill episode. Bobby takes home C, the uh, home ec, uh, and starts doing things around the house. Peggy becomes sexually threatened by Bobby, so she gets a new haircut, question mark. Also, let's not forget that Peggy not only assumed her hairdresser was gay, but also assumed that meant he would be alone on Thanksgiving. Yeah, because gay people have always notoriously had a great time in Texas, especially in the uh, late 90s or early 2000s. I'm sure there's no reason why a gay person would be alone on Thanksgiving at all. Mm. Also, thank goodness this guy gave me permission to psychoanalyze this whole post however I choose. Huzzah! Also, this post got almost 400 upvotes after only a day, so it's safe to say that this is a pretty popular opinion in the fandom. And I can't exactly say that I'm surprised that it is. I've seen a fair few assessments like this before, although not with the rather creepy assertion that Peggy is sexually threatened by Bobby. <laughs> like, what the fuck is that all about? But, uh, hey, we'll get into that soon enough. Anyway, Goodbye Normal Jeans is a really tough episode for the community to chew on because taken at face value, Peggy does seem to be sabotaging one of the only times in the whole series that Hank and Bobby are actually bonding. Really bonding. Bobby and I were up all night talking. Really, really talking. I am disgusted. A ton of people over the years have made the rather strong assertion that Peggy is in fact jealous of her son, which is supposedly born from a prideful need to be considered more important and more skillful than what she actually is. As one Reddit user put it, quote, She has her moments where her ego is so fragile and she gets jealous so quickly that it makes her character ugly. Bobby was bonding with Hank better than he had in years, and her reaction was to sabotage it in any way she could. Sad. Up until now, I've been content to occasionally rebut these kind of posts with my own insights, many of which will echo the kind of arguments that you'll hear in this video, but I'm getting a little tired of these sort of posts rearing their ugly heads, and then every time they do, I have to spend like 10 minutes typing out some variant of my core issue with the statements, so I figured, hey, I've got a big ass platform, so why not pull out all of the stops to address these talking points once and for all, just for my own sanity? Because to me, posts like this are the very definition of a surface level reading of the events of the story, one born not from taking the full scope of the script into account, instead placing the lion's share of the attention on how Peggy is reacting to the situation. And yeah, if you only look at this episode from what Peggy is doing to other people, then I could understand why folks out there would believe that Peggy is acting on unfairly to Hank and Bobby. I don't want to insinuate that these people are getting their impressions from watching out of context clips piecemeal on like YouTube or TikTok or wherever you consume your brain rot, but these arguments certainly have the feeling of people who are only seeing the nasty things that Peggy is doing to everybody else. It all speaks to a really powerful and no doubt furious fixation on how Peggy is moving through the plot rather than understanding how the other characters are also playing a part in her madness. Although why should we care what the other characters Characters are doing. After all, Hank and Bobby aren't doing anything directly to her. They don't even notice her. Who cares? They're off doing their own cute thing, having adventures, being fun and connecting, bonding in a father-son way that really just warms my heart. Only for their joy to then be ruined by that sea nag with the big feet. Yeah, he may be getting an A in home ec, but at what cost, huh? At what cost to me? All jokes aside, why is she being so aggressive? Ugh, especially when she was initially fine teaching Bobby how to do homemaker things like getting stains out of a cheerleader's uniform. Is she for some reason punishing him for doing what she wanted him to do? You know, that being learning how to be a pro at home ec related activities? Why would this be? At the beginning of the episode, she even makes the case to Hank that Bobby should be allowed to take the class. In prison movies, the toughest characters always work in the kitchen. So again, what's with the big change of heart, Peggy? Is it because he ended up being better at all this than you are? Well, uh, yes, actually, that is totally 100% it. But uh, why does she feel so threatened by Bobby when he starts to become a better homemaker than she is? Why does she care? You know where I think this is coming from? It has to be her ego, because that's one of her key character traits. One of the most notable things about her. <laughs> if we can say that there's anything notable about her. Could it be that she is, in fact, quote, 
too incompetent and lazy, or perhaps too prideful to try <laughs> to beat Bobby at being a housewife and feels that the only value she has to Hank, and really in general, beyond that is her sex appeal. <laughs> How does this help the women with the big boobies? They don't need any more help. <laughs> Sheesh, that is really an axe to the face level of bluntness. My goodness, that part of the sentence that goes, and really in general, is doing a lot of heavy lifting there. My god. <laughs> Ooh, I wish I could be so cavalier in making explosive statements like that. My channel would either wither up and die in one day from people going like, man, this guy's an asshole, I'm out of here. Or it would blow up in all kinds of new and exciting ways from all the dissenting voices that would subscribe to keep an eye on my unchained circus animal-like thoughts. <laughs> but aside from all that mess, the key to everything in this story, the special factor that turns this whole argument on its head and reveals what's really going on here, comes from an earlier part of the episode when Hank is explaining to Peggy why he does not think that Bobby should be allowed to take home Eck. If Bobby learns to cook and clean for himself, what's his motivation to ever get married? And there it is. If Bobby can take care of himself, then why the hell would he want to get married? But hey, maybe you're one of those bleeding heart baby men who think that you should get married for a stupid reason. <laughs> well, let's count them off and refute them one by one. Are you perhaps getting married for a sissy thing like love? <laughs> That's for suckers. For companionship, you don't need marriage for that. They got you covered in prison, where you can have all the companionship you can handle in there. I hear it's a regular love fest out there with the boys. For having someone else to be a part of your two-person horse costume for the devil's orgy that we call Halloween, <laughs> somebody get Junie Harper on the line. We've got to split this devil horse in twain. Get her deathmobile on the road stat. Or maybe you're getting married for the joy of being with someone who you mutually enjoy spending time with? Ha ha ha! I'm sorry, I didn't know we had Roger Ebert in the audience. I thought you'd been dead for ten years. Get back into the grave with your buddy Gene Siskel and leave the rest of us in peace. We're over here doing what God intended for us to do, spending time with people we hate. I don't want to like spending time with anyone! More SpaghettiOs? There, now that we've eliminated all of the stupid reasons that people supposedly get married, including getting married for tax benefits, who do you think you are? You think you're better than me, deserving a tax credit? Get out of here! Without all those distractions, we can see that the true, purest reason that people get married is so that I can have somebody washing the shit stains out of my drawers and microwaving my hot pockets. Now, it would be one thing if Hank had mentioned this belief about marriage to the guys or his co-workers at Strickland Propane or his diminished gluteal support group or hell, just as fucking clone how, but he is saying it to Peggy, his wife, straight to her face. This sentiment is a declaration of why Hank keeps Peggy around, why they are in a relationship in the first place. So while it might be tempting for us to say, why does Peggy feel so insecure about her cooking abilities? Is there something wrong with her? I think that the answer is pretty clear here. Hank makes her feel that her usefulness is how she should measure her value in the marriage. When Hank is literally choking down her horrible dry pork chops, notice how Peggy is looking at him. She's waiting for him to say something nice, hoping for it, anticipating it, even praying for it. Not because she's angling for a bit of ego stroking, but because Hank saying nice things about a person's efforts is the greatest level of expression that the man is capable of giving. He doesn't say, for example, I love you, well, okay, except to Mr. Strickland and Lady Bird. He instead says, good job, and I'm impressed. Hell, I'd be willing to bet that a bunch of King of the Hill fans out there would get a real warm and fuzzy feeling if Hank ever praised the way that they prepared their steaks or built their back decks or just maintained their trucks. And that's fine for simple acquaintances and work associates, but Hank also treats Peggy with the same attitude where he talks about their relationship as if it's a working arrangement. I wouldn't want it any other way. Here's to 20 more years of outstanding service. Woo! 
The joke with this whole thing is that Hank is so emotionally repressed that he expresses his affection for others with these cold and broad work-centric statements, the kind that would be terrible and off-putting if we ever heard them from people we care about in real life, but they do work in the context of the show because Hank is always so earnest about whatever he is saying. He's like, oh man, like this is the greatest thing ever. Thank you. You did an excellent job. And it's like, wow, if, if Hank is saying like I did a good job, then I really must have done something right for him to be so open and so emotional with me. Well, you made a promise to me, too. Love, honor, and obey. And I want you to obey me when I tell you to tell me how that trick was done. And importantly, Peggy does not challenge his preferred mode of expressing himself. Well, okay, at least not in this episode anyway. Uh, she does later push his emotions pretty darn hard in that one Christmas debacle, uh, the one with the Habitat for Humanity home, where she tries to get Hank to tell Cotton how much he loves his dad, uh, which is also an episode that people will often hate on Peggy for. Hmm. But in this one, she is going along with his preference for an act of service rather than like talking about how she feels. Feels, she is instead doing her best to earn that nod of appreciation from her husband. In summary, Hank is the one who brings home the paycheck, and Peggy is the one who's expected to maintain the upkeep of the house, well, okay, except for the lawn and the garage, uh, but more importantly, she's also expected to make the meals. And the show doesn't go so far as to directly condemn this situation, as there are many people out there who consider this to be an ideal relationship, but the episode does allow the problems to naturally grow from the shit show that they've got set up. The disfiguring warts and troublesome worries of their oh-so-dramatic relationship are also shown in the hilarious meat-punching adventure that we like to call I Remember Mono. Hank's secret love is exposed. Let's talk. What? Valentine's Day won't be pretty. <laughs> on a brand new King of the Hill, next on Fox. In this all-time classic and hilarious episode, the conditions of their horrible trad wife arrangement are laid out in even clearer language. You know, if I hadn't hurt my back that day, I would have known she couldn't cook. And then I would have been forced to not marry this little gal. Again, there it is, plain as day. In Hank's mind, a good wife handles the home like it's a castle, and if she can't, then why is she even here? Why get married at all, to quote him directly? But we could also argue that she has since learned how to make dishes that are special, those being her spapeggy and meatballs and her pork chops, so Hank might be saying, if I knew that she couldn't cook at the time, then I would have been forced not to marry her and all that, but now she can, so she's good. Huh, you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe this is why she puts so much importance on her signature dishes, the ones that supposedly only she can make. Perhaps all of that is being done just so she seems like a better chef than what she actually is. And I think that interpretation of this scene, one where she became a higher ranking food wench than her younger self, is a bit more consistent with the line of reasoning that then brings us to this episode, where it's clear that a woman's ability to wash rice and put pinks in with the whites are super important relationship factors to Hank, given how he's stating those as the primary motivations for Bobby to get married. Also, let's remember how Hank reacted in the episode Peggy's Turtle Song, where Peggy floated the idea of giving up her substitute teaching job in order to be a stay-at-home mom. Just look at how excited Hank gets at this idea. Sometimes I think I should just quit my job and devote myself full-time to being a mother. But, you know, what am I saying? I will save some money on faculty room football pools. But I just couldn't turn my back on my career like that. Maybe we can try it a little while. And his preference here isn't very surprising coming from a man of Hank's upbringing and background where he believes that the greatest joy in his mom's life was raising him since, hey, she didn't have a job supposedly and focused all of her efforts on caring for the household. Home, that's what mattered to her, and she just kept making it stronger every day until the divorce. Of course, Hank's belief here is quite misinformed, and is all being filtered through his simplistic and rather limited memories of childhood, where even his idealized traditional mom was in fact someone who pushed against the notion that she should be little more than a child-rearing robot. I took odd jobs, you know, as often as I could. Don't you remember that year I drove a taxi? Well, wait a minute. I remember you had a yellow car when I was little. In fact, it is even possible that Hank believes that by raising him, you know, baby Hank and all that, ooh, how cute, that is what kept his mom sane enough to be married to Cotton for God only knows how many miserable years. Because I think we can all safely agree that Tilly definitely stuck it out in her marriage with Cotton just for Hank's sake, as we still see them together when Hank is a teenager. 
They probably didn't get divorced until Hank had moved out or turned 18, so of course he's gonna think that a good wife cooks and cleans, because that's all he remembers his mom contributing to the marriage. Well, that and being a fucking footstool. Grub -a -dub -dub, I think I'm in love. All of this stuff, all the background stuff and all the stuff we see in this episode, it all goes to establish what Hank's definition of a good wife is, and it all does fly under the radar of some people's attention, because when Hank says the thing about Bobby's marriage motivation, that isn't part of a big laugh out loud kind of belly joke. It feels more casual, more conversational, a bridging sentence that seemingly doesn't do anything. One of those like, eh, who cares? When are we getting to the funny? When are we getting to the memes that my grandson sends me? When are we getting to the pocket sand or that's my purse kind of stuff? Eh. Why do you keep calling me? Kazuya Mishima wins. But surprise, surprise, it turns out that there is substance beyond those quotably quotable moments. Hoo hoo, how shocking. Hmm, okay, that's a little bit bitchy even for me. So, uh, so anyway, what does all this information do for us? What's the use? Eh, big whoop. Hank wants Peggy to be able to make a passable pot roast every once in a while. So what? You want to fight about it? Well, when you keep the unspoken arrangement between Hank and Peggy in mind, and remember how Hank shows his affection, then all of the interactions with Bobby's dazzling creations become much more understandable. This story is not about Peggy being jealous of Bobby or his talents, because it really isn't even about Bobby, it never was. Fundamentally, it's about the extremely limited ways that Hank is able to show his affection, and once Bobby had planted himself on the only outlet valve that was giving any juice, Peggy began to starve to death. Had there been another way for Hank to show his love and care and appreciation for Peggy, then there wouldn't have been any conflict between what he's then giving to Bobby. This is all especially true when you realize that Hank is not just praising the good work that Bobby's doing, he's not just saying, hey son, you did a good job, he is directly comparing and contrasting Peggy's acts of service against what Bobby can provide. I'm glad you ruined my jeans, Bobby's made them even better. Now, I'm not a professional psychologist, but I am an amateur psychologist, and it is pretty common knowledge that you statements can come off as accusatory because they are placing all of the weight of the mistake on a specific person's head, making them feel boxed in and as if they are being personally attacked. That's why it's best to use I statements to soften your critiques so that people don't go immediately on the defensive and they don't even listen to what you're saying. Notice the difference between me saying something like, you guys never leave comments on my videos, versus I feel like my videos deserve more comments. Uh, by the way, both of those sentiments are complete lies. You guys do an amazing job already. You don't need to do any more work, believe me. Uh, but the second example places the onus on my perspective of things, ones that people can then agree or disagree with. Like, eh, you know, I do feel like your videos deserve more comments, whereas the first one feels more aggressive and demanding. Similarly, when Hank says, I'm glad you ruined my jeans, he instead should have said, I'm glad that my jeans were ruined, because then there's not this direct stab into Peggy's heart, where he's saying, man, Peggy, you really fucked up my pants, but thank goodness Bobby was here to take care of the mess. It's not that Peggy is putting herself in competition with Bobby, Hank is the one doing it, unknowingly of course, but he is the person who is creating a clear demonstration of his preferential treatment. However, we could make the argument that Peggy is a freaking adult and therefore should just suck it up and understand that Bobby getting praise isn't the end of the world or her marriage. And if this were a one-time incident, then I would certainly agree, but it isn't. The same sort of treatment and unfair comparison continues throughout the episode, with Hank turning away Peggy's pork chops in favor of Bobby's succulent and beautiful roast, saying that hers will be just as good the next day, which is never a good sentiment, especially when you're talking about meat. <laughs> you want to eat that stuff fresh, usually, but uh, I guess not Peggy's, because it looks like it's made out of gloves. Ugh. Every time she tries to earn a drop of oh-so-precious affection from Hank, Mr. Emotionally Dead, her efforts are either effortlessly one-upped by Bobby, haha, <laughs> or she fails spectacularly, which causes her frustration to build and build. It's like going on a massive losing streak in, uh, oh, blast, what the devil do 25 to 34-year-olds like these days, uh, uh, Jenga, <laughs> or continually getting bad grades in class, eventually you just get so beaten down by life that you just want to scream. But again, she is the mother in this situation, so why should she care about her kid being better than her? Typically, mothers are so much better than that. 
And so what if Hank is directly comparing them against each other? <laughs> Isn't getting all heated about that just a little childish? Well, uh, yeah, sure, a little bit, but uh, I don't know if you've ever watched this show before. Hey, how you doing? It's called King of the Hill, and uh, oh yes, all of the main characters in this thing act like children at various points in the series. That's what makes so many of the conflicts so amusing, because they do not always act rationally. Surprise, surprise! In fact, I'd even go so far as to say that I believe that Hank is the biggest culprit of acting like a child, as he once got so mad, so incensed, that Peggy wouldn't reveal a crappy magic trick to him, that he once sealed her inside of a wooden box. I have sealed the box. Okay, now what? Now you tell me how that trick was done. What? You're not getting out till you tell me. Hey, Kill. I can wait. He's an asshole. Oh, uh, and of course there's also this. What am I, some kind of baby? Well, baby wants a beer. Everyone hated that baby. Hated a baby? By comparison, Peggy wanting to be appreciated by her husband and being frustrated when he doesn't appreciate her is extremely tame. And it's honestly more than a little unfair that Hank would put her and Bobby in such a position where there is a clear winner and a clear loser of his affection. Now I am aware that there are some very angry people out there who would say that Peggy just doesn't deserve praise or affection whatsoever as she so clearly sucks, but those sentiments are coming from folks with an obvious disdain for Peggy and who just generally don't see value in Hank maintaining the marriage. And you know what? It almost feels like Hank agrees with them because he's not being a very good husband. He's not doing anything to maintain the marriage here because I'm sorry, if you can't find it in your heart to tell your spouse directly that you love them and you also aren't willing to extend a little bit of exaggerated affection for their crummy efforts when they're so clearly trying, then you really don't have any excuse for when your spouse starts feeling frustrated and unloved. But hey, let's not give Peggy any more credit than what she deserves. She's not even really trying. She's going on auto pilot. Am I right, boys? <laughs> In classic lazy Peggy fashion, instead of actually trying to improve her homemaking skills, she instead turns to her sexual prowess. <laughs> Am I right? Wrong. First, she goes to Nancy, the all-knowing seer of the series, who agrees that Peggy's situation needs to be fixed, so she gives Peggy a homemaking magazine from the library, and then Peggy tries to create a centerpiece from yard waste. And while her efforts may indeed be very shitty, Peggy is trying to follow the instructions of somebody more knowledgeable than herself to improve upon herself and make use of a guide. But all she gets for her pains is a head full of lice, leading her to go to the man that I believe is a bicon of the series, her East German hairdresser Ernst, who is the one that gives her the idea to remind Hank of the other things that a good wife is able to do. Wink, wink. I did not hear you mention the boudoir. I can think of many things to be done there for Hank. Well, I am an excellent lover. Are... Are we about to learn why they call you Peggy? <laughs> that exciting idea aside, she gets all dolled up, approaches her fellow with bedroom eyes, and uh, this is how he reacts. The sooner we eat, the sooner we can get to dessert. <sighs> I think Bobby made pie. Jesus Christ, look at that. The man literally gives his wife the brush off, get the hell off me elbow. <laughs> That is rough. To those of you in the audience that do have a significant other, how would you feel if your partner gave you a, uh, you know, I'm just gonna squeeze right out of your hugging hands and head for that cheese I've been hearing all about kind of gesture? What the fuck? <sighs> Boy, that cheese. Mm. No one makes cheese like the Americans, I tell you what. I'm gonna go out on a phantom limb here, since, uh, you know, I can't currently relate to all of you happy people, and say that there's at least a small part of you that would feel a little miff that you got the cold shoulder, or, as people used to say in the early 2000s, rejected. <laughs> Banana cream, your favorite. Rejected. The machine! No! But if we want to get even rougher, which, uh, you know, that'd be nice, then let's see what Hank does when he's grossed out by the smell of Peggy's hair. Hank, what is going on? The man literally pulls their marriage bed apart. Now, you're all smart enough to understand the symbolism here, so I'll just say that things being ripped in half is one of the most uh, potent visuals imaginable in the same sphere as crumpling something up or throwing something on the ground. 
It's going to cause an emotional reaction because it's an act of disrespect. It's a show of discordance and disharmony, which is typically not the things that you want to have in your marriage bed. <sighs> But not even just that, Hank then invites Bobby to take Peggy's place in the bedroom. Uh, no, not like that. Oh, wait a minute, yeah, that's right, the whole sexually threatened point from the beginning. Ugh. Now, I really don't want to be mean to this person. I don't want to call their idea stupid or creepy or a total misread of the episode. I would never do that because it is true that Peggy did try to use sex to get back into Hank's good graces, but she did not turn to this activity because she felt that her sexual usefulness to Hank was in danger, just her general usefulness. If someone said, for example, that you are bad at video games because you couldn't beat Elden Ring, then an alternative way of proving that you are good at video games would be to throw down on the DDR map which would be an impressive feat, uh, no pun intended, of its own. It would be a different skill set and a different method, but would still be a valid way of proving that you are good at some aspect of video games. And it would be similarly nonsense for me to say, eh, your DDR skills were threatened when I dunked on you for not completing a no healing whip only level one big booty America modded run of Elden Ring. <laughs> so it isn't that Peggy is trying to turn to sex as a way of getting a sneaky one up on Bobby. That'll show him forever challenging me. <laughs> it is done for her to show her value to Hank, who is the person that factors into all of this. He's the judge that she wants to impress. It doesn't really matter what Bobby's doing as long as she gets her affirmation. If Hank had been off on some adventure with the guys, leaving Bobby and Peggy to have a homemaking competition by themselves, then sure, this would all be happening more in a bubble, and if Peggy had been close to losing the competition and had chosen to call up Hank to bust her Pegasi out to win the competition she was having with Bobby, then yes, this would be then a fair reading of what's going on. She would be using her sexuality to sort of get this one up on Bobby, uh, but that's not happening. Both Bobby and Peggy could win in this episode, it's just that Hank is exclusively laying all of the praise in the world onto Bobby and Peggy feels left out and just the more that she tries the more she just gets ignored and that is driving her nuts. In fact, there's even the argument to be made that Peggy really just wants to have a place with Hank and Bobby to be included because when she's banished to Bobby's room for her hair stank she overhears the boys talking about those fools that choose to live in San Antonio. Why would anyone live there? You know who'd get a kick out of this? Ladybird! Come here girl! You raised my hopes and dashed them quite expertly, sir. Bravo! My god, not only is she being squeezed out by Bobby, but now she's even below Ladybird? Freaking Ladybird in the pecking order? That's just, oh, that's gotta sting. As some 41 wise men once said, Just as things were looking up, you said it wasn't good enough. But still, she's trying one more time. Well, maybe she's trying too hard, when really it's closer than it is too far. Cause she's in too deep, and she's trying to keep up above in my head instead of going under. Instead of going under. But Peggy does go under, and in a big way, sinking to one of her lowest points in the series. You mind popping my bird in? Don't worry, the racks are set and the oven's already preheated. It's idiot-proof. <coughs> and then she mutters something crazy to the turkey about them uh, not deserving us? Uh, whatever the fudge that could mean, I don't know. And then runs off to her hairdresser, Ernst! And then blah blah blah, some other shit happens, I don't know, I fell asleep, I wasn't really paying attention, and then, uh, oh, she's brought home, like the runaway dog that she is, and then she discovers that Hank has, has, has recreated all of her signature dishes? Who, we? You don't even need me to make spot Peggy? Nope, I guess not. And now this is where there are a few potential options for a resolution to the episode. And if we take on the mantle, if we become the hypothetical writers for this whole thing, then how do we address Peggy's poor homemaking skills? Do we give her a big win that proves that she is better than she thinks? That there is something that she can do that Hank really values? Or, hey, if you want to do something more original and creative and fun, do we instead reveal that Bobby's talents were actually because of his home ec teacher, Ms. Bentner, has been puppeteering Bobby from the beginning, wearing him like the fat white lump skin suit that he is? <laughs> well, I, I guess you never know. Freakish things do happen. But unfortunately, no, the writers show themselves to be both sane and wise, so they do not go with the direction that I would have done, which is definitely the puppeteering thing, and I'm so sorry that the whole series has the detriment of not having that super fun idea. Blech. Rather, they have Hank plainly say why he doesn't care about Peggy's crafting abilities. I married you because, you know, you know, 
the love. Aw, yeah! oh, that's so sweet. But also, notice just how difficult it is for him to say this even though they are the only two people in their private house right now. Even when he's away from the judgmental eyes and ears of people like Debbie, who as we all remember is Mr. Strickland's eyes and ears, even if her tweak, 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 and... belongs to Miss Liz, when Hank is away from those prying people, he still finds it borderline painful to say the word love, which is why this ending works so well. It shows that Hank is willing to bypass his normal comfort levels to tell his wife that she is more important than any cook, any dish, any home improvement technique out there, meaning that she does not have to change anything about herself because it is her that Hank loves. Of course, the man's intense discomfort with expressing this rather basic emotion demonstrates that it was pretty understandable for Peggy to not implicitly understand that Hank loves her for her, because as she points out in the Pregnant Pause episode, You're my wife. Well, I know, it's just... <laughs> Well, sometimes a woman needs to hear it. Right, you guys get that. That's something that we can all agree on. We all like to have our efforts and presence, all the stuff that we sort of bring into this world, valued and affirmed every once in a while. It's like water. Everybody needs at least a little bit to stay alive. Of course, maybe there's folks out there like, uh, I don't know, you, who take the stance of Immortant Joe, who cautioned us not to get addicted to water. Ah, there are those tricky you statements rearing their ugly heads once more. Ugh. Oh, and uh, yes, 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 I almost forgot. Pregnant Pause. That's the episode that I'm supposed to be reviewing right now. Uh, whoopsie. I don't like the idea of Peggy getting two episodes on my channel back to back. Let's get back to the usual reviews, shall we? Seems like just yesterday Mom and Dad brought her home for me. If I'd been old enough to talk, I would have asked for a monkey. To quickly put a bow on this whole topic, Hank unknowingly drove Peggy insane by measuring her efforts against Bobby, which was then complicated by the justifiable assumption that Peggy had that Hank only kept her around the house because he wanted a traditional wife. Once Bobby looked like he was going to take over that role, Peg went into full panic mode. And it isn't a really big surprise that she did, as Hank has a really bad habit of shit-talking those that he finds odd or useless. I mean, for God's sakes, one of his actual catchphrases in the show is, that boy ain't right. If Peggy had indeed fallen out of his good graces, then I wonder how long it would have been before Hank started to say stuff like, my wife ain't right. You have made her feel useless in her own house. Now she is in my house, laying face down in a puddle of her own self-esteem. Pull her out before she drowns. To my eyes, Peggy showed herself to be a fighter in this episode, powered by her need to be loved by Hank, who is one of the only people that she has in her life that actually genuinely cares for her. Had she been booted out of the house, Exodus style, who the hell would she turn to? Her horrible mother, cheating Nancy, drug addict Hoyt, creepy Bill, sleeps in a drawer cotton, Luann? I mean, Luann's roommates compared her to Hitler for fuck's sake, so uh, <laughs> yeah, what an overwhelming cornucopia of friends and families that Peggy has to turn to in her hour of need. <laughs> anyway, now that all of this is done with, I have to return to my task of reviewing all of the King of the Hill episodes in chronological order. I'm currently Currently in season three right now, and uh, when is Goodbye Normal Jeans showing up uh, exactly? <laughs> ah, shit, that's a while away, huh? Well, if you want to see a full review of this wacky ride through this turkey stealing nightmare, as opposed to the exploding turkey nightmare of the uh, other Thanksgiving episode out there, then consider turning this video off and awakening from a sweat soaked nightmare in three years, jarred awake into remembering that my little channel exists and that I'm probably still doing this funny little thing. Review to death! If only there was an easier way to stay updated on what I'm doing. Hmm. Eh, well, until someone invents a better method, I'll keep suggesting that people do the whole uh, Nightmare in Three Years thing, as that has been working out gangbusters for my channel. So until the next video, we can definitely say that this topic has indeed been... Reviewed to death. Thank you so much for listening to this wild opinion piece, and I'm already looking forward to seeing my arguments rightfully picked apart in the comments. Thank goodness this community is still going so strong, so lively and engaged. What a gift. 
And thank you especially if you are one of the Reddit commenters or posters that featured in this video. I hope you don't feel bad that I sort of put your ideas out there. I mean, it's all a public forum anyway. I mean, Reddit's not exactly like this big private thing, but I did blur your name, so hopefully nobody goes after you for anything like that. And if you do go after these people personally, then you're a big friggin' dick. You know, we should be here commenting and rebutting ideas, not going after people personally. So if you did sort of feature in this episode and you're feeling bad, I really hope that you don't, because even though we don't see eye to eye on this whole thing, I do value your opinions and ideas. It's just that I don't necessarily sort of agree with them and I explained why and I'm very glad that we both have this sort of platform to uh, voice our opinions. So yeah, hopefully you're not feeling bad if you featured in this episode or you recognize your comment. It's all in good faith. I don't have any sort of malice towards you personally. It's all good stuff and I'm glad that we're all here sort of contributing to this conversation around King of the Hill. I'll keep appreciating it and profiting off of it and I'll see you in the next review. Hey, Peggy. Well, maybe for you it is. Oh, I was expecting you to say good morning. <laughs>